the Dodgers are what you want to be. Oh, you think? I mean, they they just win. They, you know, and, and it wasn't a great game. It wasn't what I would call a uh, you know an offensive explosion. But damn, all they do is win. And uh, you know, Aaron Boone says the rest of the league is caught up to the Yankees. Mm. Uh, nobody's caught up to the Dodgers just yet. Maybe San Francisco will because this will be an amazing series between between two teams that have never met in the playoffs. Mm. Think about that for a second. So this is going to be great. This is going to be. Yeah, uh, I'm not going to pay attention to it at all. I know yeah, you're not going to pay attention right. to yep. it. Yeah, that's right. Yep, that's right. And you know, we're still picking up, uh, you know, the mess after the aftermath uh, that took place in Boston the other night. But uh, Phil Nevin going after A. Rod, saying he's never been in a situation like that before because A. Rod, in real time, criticized Phil Nevin about sending Aaron Judge in that situation as Stanton hits the ball off the wall and Nevin. You know, not backing down, saying, look, man, I, I made the read. This is what I look for. I know all the conditions. I know where the ball went. I know what the kind of throw it was. And, you know, sometimes the other guys, you know, make plays too, essentially. And that's exactly what Bogarts did. He made a, a seed of a throw uh, to Ploiecki, and Ploiecki obviously put the tag on Aaron Judge. So there's a lot of stuff to go over. There's a lot of aftermath stuff to go over, which I think we're both dealing with now aftermath. with both of these teams. Yeah. The aftermath of the end of the season. And both teams are going to go through some changes. There's no question about that. And the Mets being, you know, told that Theo Epstein is not interested is not surprising at all. Yeah. I told you that, you know, last week hmm. that he was not going to be uh, a part of this. Whole Would have been thing. a long shot. Yes. Right. It sounds like what he wants to do in, I guess he's working with a private equity firm behind the scenes to help NFL owners with their their money flow, their cash flow, the, you know, the investments and all this other stuff. Sounds like he's going to want to buy a baseball team and be a part of an ownership group. As opposed to being given right. a part uh, ownership of a team to run it. Right, yeah, I don't think that would ever happen here anyway, and I just can't imagine an owner who spent his whole life, you know, acquiring what Steve Cohen acquired to hire somebody by paying them a piece of the team. This doesn't, I don't necessarily know, that uh, maybe that's happened somewhere along the line, I'm not sure. But that that doesn't happen normally. That is a that that is something that you know an owner of a team is not doing that. Let's put it that way. Yeah. So the Mets are going to search for this uh, VP of Baseball Operations. It might end with Billy Bean. We will find out. But I thought that this was very interesting, and I wanted to run this by you since you were in a professional sports locker room at yes. one point in your life. All right. So there's this ESPN.com article about the Mets in this season. Some guy wrote a book about the Mets and how they lose in every way possible started writing about the Mets towards the end of the season because here they go again, losing in every way possible. So he starts talking to some of the guys in September about what they think is going wrong. So here's Aaron Loop. Aaron Loop, the reliever Aaron Loop. I know who he is. I know. I'm just making sure the audience knows who I'm talking about. Okay. He goes, I think that's probably the one guy we might have been missing this year is the guy who says, okay, that's enough. It's time to get down to business because we all know everybody's trying and you always get the rah rah next game. You got this stuff, but at some point you need the okay enough. It's time to go now. And then Jeff McNeil said, "We don't really have one guy who's getting after people. Maybe it's something we need." So basically, you've got two guys on the 2021 Mets who admitted publicly that they don't have a leader in that clubhouse. They've got all sorts of guys in there. The Pete Alonzo making up fake hitting coaches, the Francisco Lindor and Javi Bay, and a million guys. Conforto's been there forever. They just admitted that this entire season they don't have a leader in that clubhouse or someone who's going to say, "All right, enough with the bull crap. Let's go out there and win." I mean, that's a that's a pretty bad and damning statement from both of those guys. And I want to know who the hell is that person going to be? Is it going to be the next manager who's going to be the all right enough guy? Or is it going to be someone from the outside of the organization that comes in mm -hmm. and changes the dynamic of that clubhouse? Yeah, I, I thought that there was something weird going on inside that clubhouse, and I still believe so. And I still believe it was the makeup of the team. And I also, as good as Javi Baez might have been while he was here, I think that also upset uh, the the locker room because you know basically this is Francisco Lindor who just got a huge contract asking the Mets to bring his best friend here and to take the position of a player who's already been in that position and was a big part of the hopes and dreams of the Mets moving forward in Jeff McNeil. So I do believe that there was some internal strife there. I don't care what you say. It's just it's human nature. It's human nature that to be the second baseman 
and then all of a sudden have your superstar shortstop not thinking about anybody else but his best friend to bring him here and to put him on the field to take that guy's spot. So to me, that that also had something to do with it. And Francisco Condor, as good as uh, a player as he is and as an offseason uh that he, an offensive season that he had, he's not going to be a leader. You know, he, he's going to be the guy running around, talking to everybody at second base, being like the greeter at uh, City Field and making everybody feel better when they're out there at second base, especially, you know, guys on the other team, uh, which I, I I can't stand. Yeah. I hate it. I know it's baseball, and I know it's 162 games. It's different than football. It's different than most other sports. But uh, in this case, uh, there there's, you know, there, there's a lack of edge there to me that, that I that I just don't see. Well, I, you know, you said with you know the 1986 Mets. What they had edge, of course. Well, they had edge everywhere, and they had a leader in, in Gary Carter who was beyond reproach. He just showed up every day and and played his ass off, and was the ultimate leader of that team. When you think about it, I don't. You know, Keith, Keith Hernandez was a leader, but you well, know, I mean, Keith, Dykstra and Backman had edge too. Right, they, but they had a different type of edge. But there was always that one guy you could fall back on. That you know you cannot question who he is as a human being and as a player and as a person, and I and I think that that was Gary Carter. I I also feel like the Mets have a lot of the same type of guys. You know, so you, you go out and you sign McCann. He's just like Pete Alonso, who's just like Conforto, who's just like Dominic Smith, who's just like Brandon Nimmo. They're all the same guy. Yeah. You know, and uh, it's funny. Phil Sims used to say, and I think he still does probably say it, uh, that Bill Parcells, you know, used to. Believe that you know you gotta every ship has got to have some rats. Mm. You know you got to have Belichick the, too. Yeah, you got to have the you got to have the Wally Backmans. You got to have the Dykstras. You got to have the guys that are going to be on the edge every single day and will do everything it takes to win a ball game. Now sometimes those decisions that they uh, get themselves involved in could be looked at as the wrong decision. But while they're in the middle of all of this, they're all maniacs. Yeah. And on top of that, they had a, a crazy coach too, and Davey Johnson. Sure. Yeah. So I, I just think like the Mets are like. I don't know. To me, there's flair there with uh, with Lindor, and that's about it. Yeah, I mean, flair. But I mean, we're, he, what McNeil is asking for, and I'll and I'll read another part of this quote. He goes, "We don't really have one guy that's getting after people." And then he said, "I've never really had that on the Mets three or four years. I've never really had that." Now, is this one of those situations where be careful what you wish for, too? Well, and, and and that guy that can get after the other teammates is someone who has to have respect the second that he walks in the door. It can't be someone up from the minors. It can't be someone who is scuffling in another on another team and then shows up and starts getting after people. I mean, that person's a that's a very specific person that could walk into an environment and start just ripping the rest of the team because he wants to win. More than they do. Yeah, I don't know exactly who that person is. All I do know is that Jacob Degrom missed the second half of the season, mm -hmm. and maybe Jacob Degrom, uh, while uh, the best pitcher in baseball, doesn't have like he has the same personality as the other guys. Like they're all the same kind of guy. Yeah, you, you see what I'm saying? Yeah, a lot of flatliners. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you know, they're all good guys. They're all great guys you want to you know hang out with and you want on your baseball team, but I don't think you want to have. You know, twenty-two of them. <laughs> yeah, that's what okay. you're right. Right. So the the guy is, you know, even like when you look at the bullpen, all those guys. Like nobody. May, maybe there's a little flair with Diaz. There's a little flair with Marcus Stroman. There's no question about that. When he's out on the mound, uh, he brings a. I, I'm not saying a leadership quality, but I am saying yeah, he he brings like an energy to the team that. It, to me, is like when you say flatliners, that's exactly what they were. Now, did he tweet something about the Yankees yesterday? None of us can see his tweets because he's blocked all of us. But I saw a couple people quote tweeting something that Marcus Stroman said saying, I think Carlin was one of them. was like, why don't you just ask the Yankees for money or why don't you just slide into Hal's DMs next time? Is there any way, is there anybody out in the newsroom that's not blocked by him? We could see what he tweeted. Guy, be real so, yeah, curious. He wants to be a Yankee. Yeah, he's always wanted to be yeah, a Yankee. We know that. So, so all the Met fans out there, they're dying. Oh, Marcus Stroman, hometown kid. We got to bring him back. Great to season. Be a he wants to be a Yankee. So for every Met fan, and also apparently the Padres are hot on his trail too. I'd be shocked if he was back in a Mets uniform next year. But I want to know what he was tweeting to to the Yankees because he I, did it last year too. I, I kind of feel like I kind of feel like he thinks his time here is done. And I don't know, you know, why he thinks that. Um, he probably, I, they probably have not had any sort of contract discussions. But I, I just get the sense from him and what he says that he's done with the Mets. 
like in his mind, he's done with the Mets and he wants to go somewhere else. Yeah. That, that's I, I don't want to put words in his mouth, but if you if you take uh, what he says and what he tweets, then I and he's but this is even when he got here. Mm-hmm. You remember he was not overly happy coming to the Mets. So didn't Cashman had said something about him too, like. You know, there was nobody out there, or, or maybe he took it too personally. It was like nobody out there was really upgrading our rotation at the trade deadline. And Stroman was like, hello, I was right here. And that was after he was traded to the Mets. Well, S- Stroman feels that way. That doesn't mean Cashman feels yeah, that sure. way. Yeah, sure. But, you know, I mean, but so, I, I mean, think like, Stroman was kind of right about it, though, after the year that he had. Well, he certainly showed up every single game. And, you know, not every game was great, but he was there every game. He made it through. The most consistent pitcher. Without question. And he did it in a, guess what? Contract year. Yeah, After he, a year that he eh. decided to opt out, when right. he didn't have to play. Yeah, well, it was the right time for him. So uh, we'll see if he ends up. He's going to get the big bucks. I would imagine that he's going to get significant money. And that so that's another one of those big decisions that the new GM is going to have to make. The new VP of baseball operations. If it is Billy Bean, they just bring Billy Bean over with Bob Melvin and the Oakland A's are now the New York Mets. That just doesn't feel like them doing anything old. Now, I know that the I A's... we're going down, like, you know, the Art Howe uh, road. Oh, my God, Art Howe. <laughs> <laughs> Remember Art Howe? See, oh, but, my but here, goodness. Here's the deal. Like, whoever they hire has to understand that it's more than just... It's it's about building a baseball team and everything else, but as, I, I, I say this 100,000 times over, and sometimes they just don't get it. And I think... If I if I looked at the two football teams, I think they kind of got it. I think they got both Matt coaches that can actually speak to the media. Now, they may say some quirky things and weird things, but coaches are going to do that. But at least when they stand up there and you hear what they're saying, you feel somewhat confident about mm-hmm. their abilities to coach a football team. Yeah. Right? They have a perception that we all have of them. Now, whether or not they turn into uh, Pat Shermer or they turn into – or Tom Coughlin, it, you know, that depends on their success on the field and whether or not they can get the most out of their most important players. But at least now, I feel like when we watch and see them, we feel comfortable about them. And it's the same thing I would say for the Mets. I mean, Brody Van Wagen, it was such a mismatch. <laughs> you know, but it was such a Mets thing to do. Oh, it was great. I it, mean, was it was such it was, a Mets thing. It was Jeff's buddy, and he sold him a line of goods, and Jeff bought it, and that's what you got. I mean, and it was at least fun. I got to tell you. Well, we had fun with it, yeah. and he gave us a lot of content. I want to deliver a championship to you now and every year in the future. Every single year. Every year, championship for the Mets. Thank you. <laughs> All right. So we have to stay away from that. Like, the Mets have to stay away from that. So what do you think of Billy Bean then coming here? Uh, well, Billy Bean has got a track record, and I know that, you know, a lot of, of people. never winning a championship. I understand that, but he's also had a limited budget, and but they always seem to be in the mix. They always seem to be. Can't argue that. Around, you know, the the playoffs, whether they make or they don't, they always, you know, this year they they lost one of their best players to injury late in the season, kind of like the Mets, and they were one of those teams that just fell off while other teams were surging. I mean, isn't there some sort of irony that the richest baseball owner is now zeroing in on the guy who is most known for building a team with no money? Well, it was Heim Bloom, too. Okay. He went from the Rays to the Red Sox. That's yeah, a good I mean, example. So, so there's a bunch of guys that are like this. But it's this, just like they, the richest. I thought the richest guy was supposed to not also, get the frugal GM. You know, I know that uh, Theo Epstein would like to take all the credit for the analytics and all this other stuff, but Billy Bean's been doing this for years. He has. He's so you dick. like the I'm getting the sense you like I, the idea. I, it's I, not I, exciting me at all. I understand that, but what I, do you have somebody that it would be more, in, you know, more? You know, uh, it's funny. I wanted High and Bloom back with the Brody Van Wagen thing. I did. Right. So, he, but here, here's what I'm saying about Billy Bean is that I wanted has, that raised GM. A, now that's the he guy. He has I a track record, and he certainly has a reputation. Oh. Thank you for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and don't forget to hit the red bell so you're notified when we have new content.